All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And wish you a very happy new year to each one of you. Uh, dear students, if you remember, uh, in continuation to our uh, previous discussion, we have decided to go on with a few more interaction sessions whereby we will talk about the industry, what is going on in the industry, what is the industry expectation from a student, and of course, how uh, the industry officials can guide you for shaping up your future. So this is one such session whereby we have one, one senior professional uh, from the industry with us. I'm sure uh, this session will be giving you a lot of inputs, a lot of thoughts they will be, uh, you will be gaining out of this session. The expectation from you uh, is that uh, since it's a very uh, relevant session, you will be jotting down few points, whatever you'll be hearing out here. That And uh, when you log out, I'm sure you'll be having a lot of thoughts in place to uh, plan your steps uh, for transforming yourself from a student to a professional. So in that context, we would like to welcome Mr. Nirmalia Gupta at a Sansol Engineering College discussion session uh, from Cognizant Technology Solution. He's a senior director out there. So I'm sure uh, he will be sharing a lot of information with you, which will give you a lot of thoughts, a lot of ideas, and uh, his advice, his guidelines will help you to shape up your career. So without wasting time, sir, I would like to hand it over to you. Welcome, Mr. Gupta. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for that. And a uh, very warm good afternoon and a happy new year to all my friends out here. Um, I'll probably just give a very brief introduction about myself uh, before we get started uh, on today's agenda. Mm. So I, I am I'm actually uh, from Asansol, uh, like if you can see the picture on, on, on my background, like that's from St. Vincent's. So I, I did my student like uh, um, schooling from St. Vincent's and Patrick's then uh, moved on to doing a BE from uh, uh, Shibpur, uh, which is highest you now, and for the studies in MBN number. So that's that's the educational background, and I've been um, uh, working on the on uh, the IT sector for the last 21 years, um, almost uh, like a, an entire lifetime. Now it looks like uh, doing there. Worked in various uh, roles there. Right now I'm I'm, I'm leading a practice. Uh, for the retail uh, retail product suite uh, in Cognizant, to a uh, pretty large practice that, that that I currently lead, and it has customers across the world. So uh, that that's in a crux or where I am coming from. I know we we have a, a very big assembly out here. People from various backgrounds have come in with people who are opting for various disciplines who are here, and I'll I'll try my best to actually interact with you and see what I can, uh, from my experience and from my um, uh, thoughts or, or, or my insights, if I can help you in probably charting a, a career which, um, uh, which helps you in the long term. So uh, without much ado, I have a, a small presentation which I'm also sharing. Um, uh, so I'll just do that, uh, just give me a second. Uh, it will just help us to probably um, have a um, better understanding of what, where we are doing. So let me know if you can see my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the agenda for today, uh, what I thought uh, I'll have is, um, like I'll talk about engineering as a discipline in the current context, uh, how, how it has changed. Um, then we'll talk about uh, the new opportunities, the new digital era that has come in uh, completely changing the way we deal with uh, products, technologies and people. Um, and also we are talking, obviously we're going to talk, uh, talk about how, what as an industry, what we look for in, in people like you, you all, uh, when we want to embrace you. Like, uh, I think this is a, like a room full of people who will be uh, future tech, uh, like uh, technocrats, who would be uh, technical leaders, who would be uh, entrepreneurs on their own. Uh, so I think it, it would be a very interesting conversation that I, I would be having with you. And I, request you to please uh, have it like make it interactive because uh, it, it's no fun speaking on just on my own so if you if you guys uh, and people uh, talk 
ask questions. I'm, I'm more than happy to answer and discuss. So the first piece, uh, that's what, what I had uh, on my uh, mind was like discussing about engineering discipline in the current context. Yeah, like uh, now it, you are in a very critical phase of your career, right? This is where the first step of, of your professional careers you have taken. All the time of class uh, 12 exams and everything is gone now. This is where you, are, you will start your career. The, whatever you do in the next four years will strongly define um, how your entire It was muted. So but this is this is critical. Now I have also been through phases like like this uh, when we joined uh, as, as as the first year in um, engineering or like the MCA students as well. Um, so what what we generally tend to do is probably um, we take it uh, take it easy. Uh, and I am not saying that like you you don't enjoy what you're doing, but uh, probably uh, there are there are things that. You need to keep in mind uh, while uh, while you work, you enjoy, you play. So there are certain things that you need to keep in mind so that uh, the larger goal of your career also is is uh, kept intact. So let me let me put in some perspective. So. Across India right now, if you see, we are we are having so like we have 16 IITs, 31 NITs, 23 triple IITs, 3,500 plus other institutes. So it's a huge uh, institutes which are uh, producing good quality engineering talents. Like uh, 10 lakh engineers are coming out of uh, of our colleges every year, okay. and. Uh, Obviously, we, uh, most of them come out with, uh, with the expectation that it's a professional uh, course that they have taken and uh, they want to be uh, placed, employed and successful, right? So that, that's, that's probably the primary goal of a lot of you. Uh, a few of you will obviously go for um, uh, higher studies and I'm, I would be so happy if, uh, uh, if that percentage, generally that percentage uh, tends to be lower, but uh, I would be very happy if that, that percentage increases because um, I think specialization uh, and um, in focused attention to particular streams is, is what, what takes you forward. And we sometimes probably uh, do not take uh, then like doing a master's uh, or, or doing other specializations so seriously because we think that probably getting the job, the job is the uh, end goal. Uh, it's probably that's just the uh, a means to achieving your end goal and should not be your like the end goal. Uh, of the of the ten lakh people, uh, engineers or uh, technical students that that qualify, we what we have uh, seen uh, from data points is forty two to fifty percent gets actually placed. So which which want to sound negative here, but what I want to make uh, clear is. It's a it's a very very competitive world out there, right? So, uh, like uh, getting into engineering and getting into a good uh, discipline doesn't always hundred percent ensure that you would find a good placement. So obviously there are certain things uh, from you your side that you would have to do. I, I think you are in a great college, uh, like that's like probably one big checkbox that you have, so which which will allow you to. Um, uh, allow you to explore, expand and explore a lot of opportunities. Uh, maybe not all other institutions are at that, that can give that kind of uh, uh, facilities. Uh, so that way you are in a good, you are in good hands, but uh, even then uh, there is nothing you can take for granted. Right? So currently see, uh, currently what has happened is the entire world has been uh, disrupted and, uh, and I'm not talking about COVID, I'm saying entire world, world has been disrupted over the last say, 20 years by an explosion of technology, right? So what we used to get uh, in like a month's time, we are not getting in, in, in five minutes. Uh, and it's not like, don't, don't think technology is only computers. 
So across the board, be it automobiles, be it retail, everywhere, like technology has completely overshadowed uh, uh, progress in, in any any other fields. So this this new and disruptive technology has actually given India uh, a lot of advantage because India has it has fresh, raw, brilliant talents that is available. A huge done uh, this new technologies is actually it has um, uh, made a level playing field. Uh, when I'm saying level playing field is uh, previously what has happened is you if you see Europeans or the US uh, uh, students, they had uh, some um, advantages in because they the way they learned the curriculum and everything they were ahead of us but now we with uh, with uh, institutions coming in and great institutions coming in uh, we having a very solid infrastructure across the board in, in india as well we are at a sp space where we, we are actually abreast or even probably ahead in, in certain areas. So when, when our students, uh, when they are actually coming out of colleges, they are probably more employable than a lot of other uh, students across the world. So this has actually given us a head start. And uh, uh, for all of us, I think uh, you should, uh, you should uh, probably in the next three, four years, you should probably start to embrace uh, the new changes, new technologies. You don't need to learn everything. But you should be aware of a lot of the things that are going in. Try reading uh, some some of some of the times that you spend um, in your off hours. Try try doing a lot of uh, reading. You have you have Google at your hand, so there is nothing stopping you. Uh, maybe look at a few magazines. It could be on your core area as well. It doesn't need to be in any of the tech specific technologies, but. If you, if you do reading, you'll understand how things are changed. So uh, what, what I'm, I'm trying to get to the traditional way of uh, engineering and the way the emerging technologies has impacted them uh, is, is, is come reshaping the way we, we work. Okay. So even say for an example, cars, if you, if you look, go, go into a modern car, you'll find that it's more more computer than uh, than um, an auto, than, than a mechanical um, ingenuity engineering product, right? And so, like uh, the mechanical ingenuity has probably been overshadowed with what you see inside. Like so many devices, so many. You see the dashboard; it looks like a cockpit nowadays, like a like a clean cockpit. So, and uh, like you are able to say start your comp uh, like. Um, a car from uh, from your uh, sitting in your desktop, right? With from your mobile, Th those kind of things. Uh, um, if you look at healthcare, the way healthcare um, has has shaped over the last uh, 15, 20 years, doctors are able to do uh, use robotics and do uh, and do operations sitting, say, probably in somebody is sitting in South Africa and doing an uh, an operation in, in India. So those, those kind of technologies have come in and those are going to stay. Now what COVID has done, so because COVID has now become an important aspect in uh, that, especially this batch of yours will, will take along, right? Because um, COVID has permanently impacted the way, uh, completely the change the economic order and the market demands. Uh, so what COVID has done, it has fast-tracked a lot of those technologies that were being built across the board. So what probably would have come to the market maybe three years down the line, they were actually fast-tracked, pushed by, because they saw this opportunity unfolding where, where people did not need to do actually manual work and they could automate of things. Even this meeting that we are right now having probably if it had been normal, we would have all met in an in a auditorium, right? And I have conducted the sessions earlier with uh, with uh, with students like you all. And we, we all met in an auditorium. We spoke on a dais. Everybody was there. But nothing is stopping us from doing it in, in the way that we are. And it's, it's probably a little bit of mindset change and a technology upgrade. So what I'm trying to harp 
again and again is the world has changed very very fast and uh, for for uh, for students like you uh, obviously you'll have to concentrate on what uh, there is in, in your books but there would be things in your curriculum which your student which your teachers would be um, devising uh, uh, the trainings that you would take i'll i'll come to that as well uh, the vocational training that you would take try to try to make most out of it try to learn in those places because once you come into the industry it it's 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 very different right so like there people are actually expecting immediate things from you they pay you and they expect things from you and uh, unless you stand up to that um, um, then uh, uh, you will always find you in yourself um, slipping from the probably the high pedestals that you have set up for yourself so i'll i'll just take a brief pause if there are any questions otherwise i'll i'll move on to my next section um, or if you think i am going too fast or not being able to hear i'm just trying to take a feedback any questions from any of you okay and generally we are very slow to open up so that's okay so we were talking about this whole new opportunities in this digital age so I'll, i'll first start probably this section um talking about a very common thing say retail right uh, let's look at how retail has changed over the last 20 25 years so a lot of you may not have been born in say in the 90s i think none of you mostly likely have been born in the 90s the so 90s we had we had uh, and we still have small stores in our localities right where we would just go there our, our dads or us we used to go there with a with a bag and buy stuff right so that that that's that was the system that had probably continued for almost 100 years or maybe more that's that's that was how it was uh, like we used to go to shop buy stuff pay and come back then uh, early 2000 uh, early uh, the start of this uh, years uh, like um, you know of this century yeah, no we, had this, we had this um, uh, the departmental stores come in and it was a big shift so we now knew that okay there was this swanky uh, malls that that were there and we could just go in there with a um, uh, with a basket with a trolley rather and uh, buy things everything is under one roof uh, very quick payments and and a lot of assortments a um, lot of people to help and it was a very different experience and uh, retail take took a big change at that time uh, india probably took a little more time uh, the other um, parts of the world were even faster and they probably start earlier as well so that 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 change lasted for 5 uh, 6 years 7 years and then came the flip carts of the world uh, the Am- amazons and uh, of the world that had changed earlier uh, on the other space i'm talking mostly of india so india say 2007 8 uh, you had flip cart coming in and this whole e-commerce thing coming in right and we were all starting to buy from from the internet buying through our uh, we're logging into a laptop uh, going into a browser and logging into flip carts and starting to buy okay and that that became the quickly that became the norm and that that continued for say another 5 6 years and then then this whole thing changed the paradigm and moved into your mobile once mobile uh, came and like it was in the hands of most of our people and the internet became cheap we started buying everything from our mobile right so i think a lot of you buy stuff from mobile nowadays so if you see we had we had been running a system for 100 years then next 7 years we made a complete change next 4 years we are making another change the next 3 years probably we will make another change so the rate at which we are changing and we are progressing has uh, Expi- expedited multifolds right so and that is how the world is going to be in future as well so changes will be fast changes will be disruptive and changes will can actually make you 
lose your job, you, it can make you a big success. So uh, this, uh, the screen that I'm sharing, uh, the graphics is not very clear. I'll just try to show you, like uh, try to walk you through what, what it is uh, shown here. So the three columns that you see um, uh, are, are talking about how the markets are responding. Okay, so the first column is um, completely new set of jobs that, that would be uh, coming up in say 2022. 2022 onwards, job sets that are not currently um, there at all. There is like it, those uh, job descriptions or job roles doesn't exist. So if you see in IT, it will be around 10 to 20 percent. In automotives, it's uh, five to 10 percent. Textiles, it's a little like it's again five to 10. Banking, financials, 15 to 20 percent. So that's like a, a huge jump, right? New roles new job uh, way of doing work which which doesn't do not exist even today okay and and again retail five to ten percent you may be put into right is that uh, you do not you haven't heard about the names of those jobs uh, right now but that that's going to come your way then the second part is how how many percentage of the jobs that people are doing today are going to be completely radically changed over the next uh, three, four years. So you can see every sector, it's, it's a very high number that the way they are doing work now and the way they'll do work in the next four, five years, it's going to be completely changed. And then the last one is the more uh, um, trickier one. That's where like the job roles that you see today are going to disappear. So there, there is, if you see in IT, if you see in BFSI, huge chunk of um, roles that, that is going to disappear. People who are doing jobs right now will lose their job unless they reskill, upskill into doing something different. So in, in, a, in a three, four years time, there is a complete overhaul that we are looking at. Okay. And on my right side, there are these new job roles that, that are listed and I, I probably don't want to go into all the details. Uh, the view that I wanted to give you is um, suddenly find yourself very, very, uh, like uh, you'll find yourself at the back of the queue in a lot of other, uh, a lot of the things that you try to do. So personal development, uh, institution will help you. Um, but I think unless you do it on your own, uh, it, it will be very difficult for, uh, for, uh, for anybody to help you out. And I'll talk about what the industry wants uh, when, when I come to that section, but uh, I'm just trying to build on to that uh, so that uh, you understand where I'm going. Again, uh, we kind of trying to push that same uh, point for a little more. If you see the investments that, uh, that has gone in in 2017 and the investments that are coming, to, coming in 2022, a large percentage of the new investments that people are making are on, on the new technologies, new areas of work, right? You, you see uh, embedded systems, like, like I was talking about cars, uh, there is uh, health, like healthcare, pacemakers and all, like all, all those kind of systems, softwares, large, that's, that's probably the largest section which is getting which impacted like huge investments coming in because of automation, robotics, and, and all those stuff. And we'll talk, to, talk about those as well. But if you see mechanical, you see that on the core mechanical, the spend is completely lowering because it has matured uh, core area. You have actually milked it to the extent that was, that is possible. Now you want to take the next leap. Okay. That's, that's where we are. Now, what are the what are the new things that we are seeing? Okay, uh, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, mobility, analytics, cloud. These are the things that probably are are the buzzwords, and that's where a lot of things are happening. 
So I, I'm just trying to understand. Are, are you are you aware of like at least understand what Internet of Things is? Uh, artificial intelligence. I can I can uh, probably guess that a lot of you understand. Can any of you tell me what Internet of Things is? Have you heard of that term? Yes, sir. I agree. Sir, Internet of Things uh, means that we connect devices over the network and we can control them from anywhere in the world. Something like that. Fantastic. No, no, that's absolutely right. So it's it's like a connected world of devices, right? So it's like your um, mobile connected to your car, connected to 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 the um, say a cyber camera somewhere, connected to a internet. Uh, sorry, uh, to a laptop elsewhere. That kind of a thing, and that is quickly taking shape, right? You have driverless cars nowadays, right? Uh, in the US, they are actually they are riding driverless cars. So those kind of things, even, even small things like uh, you, before you enter your room, you can switch on your AC, right? So, <laughs> so it's a it's a marriage between say the mechanics and the uh, digital space, and that that is that is a space where um, a lot of expectations are there. Uh, bus bus terminals, very example, easy examples of Internet of Things, where like probably a bus comes and um, like um, uh, and the doors open automatically. Their passengers, uh, based on uh, the temperature outside, the AC op automatically operates. Um, that kind of thing, parking, like automated parking sensors and things like that. So th those are the those are the things that are probably. Um, not probably are, are really catching the fascination of the uh, of the world and i'm trying to um, uh, stress on the fact that please don't think that this is a computer thing or an it thing it, it is completely not uh, to the contrary okay the way things are happening it's it's uh, and, and that's my next point <coughs> excuse me that's like it's a multidisciplinary convergence it's not you you kind of think uh, now a lot of the technologies which were or the um, I'll say disciplines that you were learning separately previously now are coming together uh, to create new spaces so biotechnology mechatronics aerospace <coughs> agriculture environmental engineering these are these were these are very new I think some of them are probably a little I uh, have been there for a while but what the fact is that these are uh, the, uh, disciplines where multiple technologies are coming together to create solutions which are impacting the the way uh, we live, operate, uh, transact uh, in a in a big way. Mobility, obviously, mobility means the whole thing around uh, mobile. So the the way the the mobile infrastructure uh, can can be used harnessed or expanded uh, to affect us a few years ago we would not have thought about the idea that uh, not having tvs at home maybe watching everything on our mobiles and but now it's a it's a reality um like uh, i i have a lot of my colleagues who do not have tvs at home so their kids are watching um even the same cricket on on their mobile movies on the on, on mobile netflix they're not the tvs are no more uh, an, uh, like an um, what i'll say an absolute must on the in the living room anymore so that that kind of thing so mobiles have completely changed what we have been doing the way it it, it has its advantages disadvantages like you can use it for security tracking um, the way we have depend been dependent upon now the this whole um, um, Ubers of the world, right? So um, Uber Solar uh, of the world, and, and these are completely mobile-based solutions. The third, the third, or the fourth thing that he that we are mentioning here is about analytics, and analytics means analytics means mainly is about data, data sciences, and, and the, that sort of things, where with the help of the computing powers that we have and the, like 
com help meaning like the way computing power has expanded over the years and uh, and has become cheap um, and available we are able to store humongous amount of data and all the companies across the world every company are actually doing data analytics data meaning that analyzing data uh, taking decisions based on the data and building better and bigger solutions uh, through that and uh, whether it's a banking so banking solution whether it's a it's a automobile solution it's a healthcare solution it's a, it's a retail solution uh, data is you became when they're using data to do that analytics part and um, i'm i'm almost sure a lot of you who, uh, who become um, employed later on would be working around in and around data both uh, in the analytics of the data and the manifestation or showing of the data that's also a very important part like you you can do a lot of things with data but finally the way you show that data has a big bearing on on how people understand or construe the data so it, it's not only that you need to analyze data uh, do the data massaging but also how you show it and the last is cloud cloud is obviously okay any, any one of you can help tell me what cloud is so where our data is stored means where we can store our data the virtual like storage virtual of data a virtual storage of the data right and what else only data storage is cloud or can cloud give you other things as well so so we can get access anywhere in any time we can get access this data right to internet now is it only data or is it computer we can as well? create a virtual machine also at cloud right. like uh, azure and uh, aws so it's 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 a virtualization of your entire computing that you are able to do on cloud so there is um, there are now ultra notebooks that are coming in which do not have a good like a cpu it only has a browser okay so and a very minimum cpu so like what it does is everything is on the cloud the whole computing all is also done on the cloud so you can actually spawn machines you have you can create machines that do all your computing there and and that's the, and that can be as you were mentioning access from anywhere so you don't need to have, like almost 50 to 60% of the middle to uh, like the large tier organizations within india and across the world are moving to cloud cloud meaning they are not maintaining their own data centers so maintaining their own data centers meaning that like every company use what used to happen previously we used to have a, a like a huge server room okay where all the servers were there and then you had to have your own network in between infrastructure uh, specialists this specialist that specialist to run make that happen and also security like physical security people right so that people don't barge in and make a, make an issue of it but even then there could be a flood there could be a, a Uh, some political unrest and uh, like the, your whole server could be at risk now that whole problem that 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 you had in running your own infrastructure has now been moved to the cloud so there are providers as you were mentioning i think your name is cycle right you are talking about is your so say there are these cloud providers uh, like uh, azure uh, amazon google uh, amazon meaning aws um, uh, google uh, google and a host of other cloud uh, cloud cloud platforms and oracle themselves are also providing cloud so what they are doing is they are saying come and have everything in on onto our systems keep it on the internet and we'll take care of everything so you, you will not lose data you will have backups you will have availability and you will have peace of mind you and other biggest advantage is they are talking about you only pay for what you use it's not like uh, you have to pay for everything so okay. you, can, you can pay for what you use and whenever you need to scale or need more things you can get computing powers on the fly so that's how cloud has completely uh, disrupted the whole uh, infrastructure space 
can you all go on mute please so th- this is this is where um, th- this is what i i i thought that i'll have the uh, like the enter perspective of how um, like what what the engineering discipline is and what we are seeing in the industry the new digital age that we are talking about now the third part of the discussion and i think that's where we i want to hear from you a lot is what is it that the industry is looking for in fresh talents okay. so fresh talents meaning people like you when you come out so and uh, we um, from our, our organizations we come for in, in campus interviews and what is it that we look for so the first thing that that i wanted to talk about is uh, so there are two f- aspects that we look at one is whether the person that we are talking to the gentleman that is that we are talking one of you probably is he employable employable meaning that probably uh, has 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 he learned the uh whatever has been uh, taught in his courses has he has he good command over the technology technical aspects that has been uh, that has been taught in his curriculum is is his attitude right and lot of the others uh, like the hard and soft skills in and we kind of evaluate and we decide okay this is a person who who can fit into our organization okay and it's not not only like cognizant it could be any other organization and just so we decide whether this person is employable or not now when you come and join the company now what we will have to uh, our first intent is to okay this person has come he uh, we have taken his interview and we have felt that he he is a very good fit for our organization now what do we need to make him deployable deployable meaning like is he fit to work in a project immediately most likely no right so because there are certain uh, things that you need to be trained on some technologies uh, some way of working from professional etiquettes and a lot of other things right so th- that is when the organization try to like uh, put him into a into some programs so that they are deployable right so this employable to deployable now the uh, what the organizations are trying to see is which which are the kind of profiles for whom this this gap is the least and so i i uh, am i select somebody and then i am able to deploy him into the right projects quickly instead of like putting him into a training for 3 months 4 months 5 months whatever so that that is a investment that the companies make and obviously any investment uh, that companies make they want to get a roi faster or a, like the return on the investment for faster so and that is the reason i was talking about all those things that if things are changing and you need to be abreast as to, as, as to what is happening so that when you land after getting employed like obviously the first first problem is to get, get a job get an employment uh, through uh, yeah, from, from your college but even after you get an employment it doesn't mean that you will be successful immediately in your career so how how can you bridge that uh, time like uh, that 3 4 months can you uh, through your own initiatives can you can you bring, bring it make it shorter so that you are deployable into an uh, into a project where you we can you can show showcase your skills so please consider these two points very um Uh, with when you when you have time uh, obviously uh, at your age i think uh, one of the things that always comes to my mind, mind is to just okay let me get, get the job and then everything will fall into place that does not happen okay, so please ensure that um, even if if you uh, even if you get a job uh, um, like you should be in a position where you are ahead of the other other people who have actually joined you it's always it's all it's a rat race everywhere it's a competition everywhere right so you need to be ahead of the game as much as possible and the second point uh, that i have on my ppt bridge the skill gap it's uh, it's a continuation of, to what i was talking about that uh, when you come in 
and before you are put into a project, there is a skill gap, which we try to bridge. Like we give you training on Java, we give you training on Oracle, we give you training on uh, maybe React or whatever. Like there are so many trainings that we, we try to run, right? Um, full stack developer and those kind of things. Now, if a lot of these you you have you you have already done in in your curriculum, then then like it's a big step forward for you. And uh, this is where I think the vocational training part also comes to uh, the fore. It's, it becomes very very important. Um, if I look back at my career, I think uh, like I completely wasted my vocational. Um, project right so i i went somewhere and um, i didn't do much i didn't learn much because i thought that it's probably of no use but later on when i was attending interviews even after like uh, uh, first uh, i felt uh, industry leaders look at that as a as an initial trend about your ability right so please two things, the final projects, semester projects that you work on and the vocational training. Please, please be very careful about that. Very, what I'll say, I'll put in a lot of focus on those, uh, right? Those, those are just not uh, uh, check boxes that you tick, but they'll have a lot of bearing on where you land in your, in your career. So uh, like, I think your vocational You'll have a more like vocational or uh, that uh, pro, pro, uh, training would be third year, maybe third or fourth year. I'm not very sure, but that that is um, something. Please be very careful and your final year projects. So even when you are when you will be attending your interviews, that is something that question will come for sure. Okay, so like be very sure that uh, those, those questions are going to come like your project work because. If I am going coming to interview you, I like I don't have anything uh, apart from those two to discuss with you on on what you have done on the, on the technical end. This right because you will have your mark sheet, and that is it, right? And you are you are there in front of me, uh, so I can ask you some um, questions, and you obviously there are aptitude uh, questions that I can ask, or you have already come through the returns, uh, cleared the aptitude and everything, right? So. Then if I have to evaluate you, if you think that way, the only way I can evaluate you or discuss what I have, what you have done is through the, uh, what you have done through your professional training and um, the uh, projects. So please, I'm spending a lot of time on, on this point. Please spend, uh, like, keep this seriously. It's uh, some way of just, just in getting into the first year, but whatever, projects that you work in, please try to be um, loyal, uh, integral, <laughs> you keep your integrity, try to write, write it yourself um, so that later on you are able to justify, speak about it in a more, much more uh, clearer fashion. So, so I've had interviews where uh, I could understand that this the person who has uh, worked on the project, like the project that he's mentioning, he has never seen what he has done, right? So somebody else may have done it and it's not uncommon, right? So, but um, like that, you probably get exposed very soon. The fourth point that I had here was the soft and the professional skills. So Again, that is another very important aspect, uh, you know, even for your uh, for the employable part as well as the deployable part, both. Uh, so when you, we are coming for your interviews, obviously we we judge how your soft skills are. So can somebody say, tell me, like what do I mean by soft skills? So about communication skills, the communication skills, and um, how we present ourselves, how we sit, and how we talk. The leadership management skills yes so self management skills the so leadership skills absolutely organizing skills how you organize one thing yes i think all of you have uh, you all of you are right so those are the angles that we need to brush upon so 
there are people who probably think that um, not knowing English is almost uh, like uh, they are out of the race. Mm -hmm. So, and maybe, and it practically it happens is not, a, not all of us come from, uh, say, English medium backgrounds, right? So maybe there is a um, hesitance in uh, speaking in front of others. In, in general, speaking in front of others is a difficult thing, but if it's a, um, it's a language or, or a medium in which you are not comfortable, it becomes even difficult. But my, my request to all of you who, are, who are, all are here, see, nobody, nobody actually looks at how perfect you are on your grammar. At least um, if in India, if they look, if, like when we are talking to our foreign customers, they, they really don't care how, how articulate your grammar is. What they, what they look at, at is how clearly you are able to articulate yourself, how clearly you are able to convey what, what it is, how are you, are you able to very, some, are you able to summarize things? So that, that part is very important. So obviously I'll, I'll request if you feel that you have a issue in speaking in English and all that, you please, please uh, put a lot of importance to it because whenever somebody will come to interview you he'll speak with you in english most likely 99 percent he'll speak with you in english right and if you are not able to you you may be a brilliant a great uh, uh, record but if you are not able to speak in that in that meeting because you just have those 15 to 20 minutes to actually impress a person who's interviewing you then you you may not get the job that you are actually suited for or you, so so in that case i think what you could do is instead of hiding or thinking that there is no way forward please spend the time on your soft skills and when i am talking about soft skills I, my friends here talked about quite a few and all of them are soft skills but the primary soft skills, I think, that for you know, for us to crack during the interview process or that employable process is is communication and verbal communication. Don't worry if it is wrong English, because, like as I was mentioning, when I talk to customers, all of the, like all of the Indians all seem to be the same for them, right? Though we feel that this guy speaks better English than the other guy, because of our accent and the way we speak. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of difference to, to the other side. Right? The, the way we may feel, feel else uh, otherwise, but it, it, that's how it is. So somebody who may be making a few grammatical mistakes here and there, and somebody who's talking very English, and both are from Indian. English is not up to the mark, it's absolutely wrong because everybody knows that's your second language. That's not your mother tongue. So, but obviously because that's the lingua franca, that's, that's, that's the language that, that, is, that you have to work with. Everybody that you speak in any profession that you are in mostly will be English. You have to work on your English. There is, there is no other way. So uh, you may be shy, uh, to try it out, uh, but uh, talking in front of a mirror, try to talk with uh, with a few of your friends, a core group. You can form a core group where people are uh, having a similar problem. Believe me, it's, it's just about practicing. It's just a, another language and there is no good and bad English speakers. It's just that you need to be, when you are talking in an interview, you need to talk. You like a you should not be um, hunting for words. Uh, so you, you should be able to speak and able to express yourself. So that, that is another piece that I have of advice I, I can tell from my side. And
sorry i got disconnected so uh, the next point that i have is this flexible hours new way of working and uh, I, I think most of you would be flexible. Uh, so when we interview, we, uh, any industry leader comes for interview, uh, after, after verifying your technical skills, obviously, um, mask, like how much uh, technical skills you have and all that, they'll come, to, they'll come to the angle of whether how flexible are you. Flexible meaning, are you okay to relocate? Are you okay to work in shifts? Okay. These, are, these are the things that they'll they'll want to know from you because uh, the way the world is changing um, uh, and uh, the way the political um, uh, things change rapidly, visas and everything, uh, the new way of working are, are things like where we are supporting, say, uh, you may have customers in America, you may have customers in, uh, say, Japan, and they need uh, With COVID and everything, travel has become a problem. And uh, as well as there are visa issues across the world. And so people are not able to travel. So uh, what uh, organizations are looking for is like, are, are the people flexible? Are they okay to work on some, some hours which are the not normal hours? It does not mean an overnight shift or something like that, but it could be something not, not the right, the exact way you have seen your, maybe your dad or your brother or your elders working. So that is going to change. And if, if you are able to embrace that, it's fine. Otherwise you'll, you'll have problems, right? So, um, I, I just wanted to be clear because uh, a lot of the industry um, teams that would come to speak to you would actually be uh, judging that from from your cases, right? So that whether how 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 comfortable you are in making uh, like flexing your hours, your ways of working, uh, whether you are um, um, you are adequate to work on your own from uh, without being monitored. So those those are the things that 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 now are being um, looked at. Uh, previously, all of us used to get into office and there used to be a team lead, right? Who used to sit uh, with this uh, team and uh, you you had to get immediate help. Uh, you just speak to him and that that has changed. So now uh, organizations are definitely trying to see if, uh, if you're working remotely, if you're working away from office, uh, are, you, are you adequately skilled um, to, to deliver uh, on your own? So please be flexible. These are your early years. Uh, so if you have to travel, if you have to uh, new ways of working, please uh, make make sure that you are capable to do that. And um, and I think that that will help you. I think that's how the whole industry is changing across the board, and it's um, like across all 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 verticals. That we are seeing that that kind of a trend. And one point that I, I missed here is about mastering your core specialization. So um, please ensure and uh, that the technique, technical training that you are going through in your curriculum, like the whole curriculum, that, that you, you would have a core specialization, like somebody would have a computer, somebody would have an IT, somebody may have a civil, right? That core specialization, please do not relent on that, right? So um, even if you think that, um, oh, I'll probably work as a software engineer, I don't need to learn civil, that's completely wrong. Okay? So I think uh, the core specialization not only helps you in, uh, in your Uh, I'll I'll try to see uh, understand of what you have done in your curriculum, right? I I, I would obviously if you have, have a civil coming from a civil background, but you have a say done a course on P on uh, Python, I would be happy to do that. I'm happy to see. Okay, yeah, this guy is also getting trained on other software skills and all that. 
but I, my prime motive would be to ensure that whatever you have been taught in your curriculum you have been able to excel on those so the course course space the course space you are working on, on do not uh, i'll say make any uh, uh, cuts to that so, so that, that that is another piece that i had uh, uh, as a guidance for you and finally there is no shortcut right so like i can sit here and uh, give you bullet points after bullet points but ultimately it will be you who have to decide how you want to see yourself um these are the golden years of your uh, of your professional career because this is when you make or break it in a, in a big sense right so if you are able to plan yourself start um, your skilling understand where you have a gap uh, make a very what i'll say impartial assessment of your skills and work on it right uh, there there are at this age or, or like the current age group that you are in there are a lot of distractions but uh, i think when you do that please plan and kind of do continuously start learning different things it's a very new world that you would get into uh, anyway that's like you are you are not exposed to an um what i'll say so very uh, fast changing world so the more you learn the more you are aware of what's happening around you i think the better it would be uh, for your career so i'll take a pause um i want you to ask questions or if there are any points to discuss i'm very very happy to actually discuss If any of you have any questions uh, please let me know hello yes. sir yes please i am from mechanical department yes and i want to know that uh, which uh, programming languages should be uh, learn or give more attention to to get a job in this industry that's a that's a tricky question but i think um, uh, uh, python is something that you could look at because that's uh, that's easy to learn that has a lot of industry you a job uh, um, so um, it it cannot be just one but uh, it's good that you are asking a question which means that you are actually thinking through it right so um you have to um, probably do a little bit of reading oyon as well your name is oyon right yes yes sir yeah so oyon you have to, you to do have, you have to do a little bit of reading um i like what i am telling is just off the cuff right i am like just i heard it told okay you look at python but there are other languages which could be uh, also suitable for you but uh, if anybody is starting on programming and anybody is starting now i think uh, python is a is a good way to start it it's an easy language to learn and then you can actually spread and learn other other languages as well language in programming languages and that's my thought on that excuse me sir yes please Uh, um i'm rahul mishra of csc mm -hmm. so as a csc student do we have to learn all the languages or uh, some languages will be uh, satisfying for the companies of course no all languages is not required uh, even people who are working in our companies also do not know all languages right so any one language you you learn uh, you are comfortable good i think that's that's more than enough and uh, nowadays rahul what's happening is uh, like uh, this full stack and all these uh, pieces um, are getting a lot of prominence right so if you can when you, when you are doing a programming like if you are say you are doing a web pro programming if you are able to do both uh, some some of the front end and back end and uh, uh, like database work on your own which means that you know end to end that, that that's an advantage but it's not a 
like if you know something very well maybe say a java or a python or or a c i think that that's good enough because what the com- companies look for is whether this person has the has done a piece of programming because if you know one programming language well learning another is is not very difficult right so you don't have to like stretch yourself thin into learning various languages just focus on the, like uh, decide okay this is a, a stack on which i think there is a future i'll work on this and you just work on that you don't need to learn everything that, i think that's my advice excuse me sir yes sir excuse me sir yes sir i'm soham ganguly from cse sir mm-hmm. is there anything we can look forward about any positive impact of this covid in the technology sector yeah obviously like uh, if you see i am just giving a very um, crude example if you see the the share market okay the it stocks the it stocks have gone up almost 20% i think even more probably over the last one year when half of the industry was reeling to just keep their lights on it and pharmaceuticals pharmaceuticals obviously you are understand why but uh, it it has gone up like 20% because even a small uh, shopkeeper is wanting to open an e-commerce offering right because everybody is, uh, has understood that unless you have a digital footprint you're out of the game so and that is not only limited to small players large players big companies completely overhauling their um spendings on it so i it in the next 3 4 years is going to going to have a lot of uh, investment i showed it showed you one slide where we we were talking about how much investment that is there on software so you could see i am trying to show again like out of everything else where is it where i think there is the maximum investment was i clear so uh, yes sir yes excuse me sir so this is lekha mehta from from csc department sir i want to ask that when we learn two or three or more programming languages then are there any chances that we might get confused because sir sometimes when we learn like java c++ then there are chances that we get mixed up or confused in the languages see the, the chances of getting mixed up is 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 not there unless as, um, see what happens at, at when when you will be working you will be not practicing a lot i'm not practicing a lot meaning like uh, the way professionals do the professionals would be coding the whole day right so for you you would probably work on one project on this uh, language then another project in another language so at that point it becomes a little confusing because um, it's difficult to remember all the syntaxes and the way of working okay, but uh, i think once you are used to it uh, on a day to day basis it, like it, it you will not get confused but in order to i think as i was mentioning earlier in order to say um, crack an interview i think it's better that uh, you decide on a particular stack and work on on, on that specialize on that and say that i i know I, not everything i know, know a lot on this space i have worked on my project i have worked on my training on this and things like that so that you are able to build your case and for us if somebody knows a particular language well that's a that's a huge like a thumbs up right it doesn't matter which which language but if if i understand that this person in sitting in front of me has has mastered this language i am i'm more than happy to have him in my team and train him on another language because i know if he has learned this he'll be able to learn the others as well and so now which programming language is in highly demand yeah that's a that's again i was mentioning it's a tricky one right so Uh, right now there are a lot of new trends that are happening so all these artificial intelligence analytics data science um, uh, these are relying heavily on um, iot these are re- relying heavily on python okay so python because it has uh, it's open source and uh, all the industry leaders 
have in have asked their their lead uh, investors. So libraries are available. Okay, um, machine learning and everything. You have good li libraries available for Python. So Python is a good language to start. Okay, if somebody is starting. But again, there are other angles to it in terms of full stack development, as I was talking about mobile development, right? So those are the spaces where where also there is huge traction. So uh, everybody wants to like every solution that you devise will have a mobile solution attached to it, right? Uh, any 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 new solutions that you think of, which uh, has a like an end customer in mind, uh, will have a, a mobile solution, be it for buying, be it for consuming, whatever. Could be a um, like a, an Alexa app, an Amazon app, like so. You, mobile mobile programming is also a very like a upcoming thing. But on the mobile space, you have to look at um, probably a lot, lot of focus is going away from core and like Android uh, based uh, programming because. Uh, if you do android based programming you, your code will not deploy in ios so the newer um, hybrid solutions are coming into into play react native and all where you can like write one code and deploy across multiple uh, operating systems those are coming so more and more people are actually trying to like the your go to market or the time to develop deploy the application that has to be shortened so mobile applications you can definitely look at that space look at um, like what are the latest new mobile application like mobile development strategies especially around hybrid react native and those those sort of things if you are doing web development look at the the mean stack the mon stack as they call they like, like um, working on uh, angular react uh, node, you know, uh, work on those. All the like full stack developers were like this mean stack, mon stack, huge demand, huge, huge demand, at least now. And we are struggling not to have people. In Python, we have huge demand. So the, the, these these are the areas where I'm, I am seeing a demand. I'm talking to, to you about that. Knowledge about cloud, cloud deployments, a big yes, right? So all, all these things you probably have to know. Thank you, sir. Excuse me, Hello, sir. sir. Excuse me, sir. Hello, yeah. sir. I'm Sobik Mondal from uh, CSE department. Yes. Sir, I'm asking that, I'm asking that is it okay to do in that in the past year or do in the in all source in the Is it already in first year? I clearly so I'm there. asking that to, to do internship in first year, is it worthy? I think you need to learn a little bit before you go for an internship, if you ask me. Second year. I'm saying that for starters, starters that uh, want some people who know excuse me sir yeah hello yeah sir, i'm i'm Mupashtak from csc department so i was asking that in our college means we will be learning all the programming language available in the market or the I don't think that's. I think don't. That's not possible. Right, learning everything. Um, th that is a question for I think for your teachers. But I don't think it's uh, possible to learn everything in in college. Right. So that's what I was trying. You need to probably focus on one aspect and one stack or one area and learn that the best the way you can. You, there's no way. Learn every in in college. By myself, also I have to learn by myself some languages. Yeah, you can. But I'm saying even if you're learning on your own, don't learn. Try to learn everything. Try to focus on a particular space, and because and then like after you get a job, like let the employer decide where they want to put you. But 
but it will be easier for the employer to take a decision on your capabilities if you are good in a particular area if you try to learn everything you may not be good in any of those right so uh, instead of jack of all tricks try to still concentrate on one one space okay excuse sir. me sir excuse me sir i am hello sir i am parvesh from csa department sir is a competitive programming important for crack uh, product based companies interviews or or uh, or i i can crack uh, product based companies interview through our projects uh, what is important is competitive coding is important or should i have focused on my project development See, that is a the decision that most on the product companies the product companies what they look at is at your level they look at about your um, clarity of thought okay and if they are if they are very technical centric product companies they may do competitive programming as well uh, competitive programming generally the i think the services companies are more into competitive programming but there is no right and wrong answer to that but uh, product companies generally look um, for um, at least at your um, grades look for more about uh, your clarity of thoughts the way you are able to articulate your aptitude and then they, they should be training you um, i don't have a very clear yes no answer to that because the different companies react the different ways but uh, obviously uh, services companies because i am from a services company i know they look at um, some competitive uh, like programming and things like that what is the difference between product based companies and service based companies so product based companies are who actually create products who create new softwares okay say oracle is a product based company microsoft is a product company google is a product company okay and there is obviously these are the big names oh yes sir okay and then tcs is a services company cognizant is a services company because we serve, serve our customers on the products that they are using or on the solutions they are using so we provide services somebody else creates the products but which type of services sir services meaning support services implementation services integration services consulting services right so generally these companies are not building their own products there are they are doing to uh, some to some extent but they like google and all will will not be coming and helping individual customers to uh, like on, on their products right so they'll uh, probably what generally happens is um, say suppose i'm giving an example somebody has bought an uh, bought oracle products okay oracle database So Oracle database, they'll go and buy from Oracle themselves. Right? They'll pay Oracle for a license, okay. and they'll buy. Now installing that Oracle, configuring that Oracle, making that Oracle uh, database uh, speak to other application, you need other people, right? That is where the services come. They allow you to actually make uh, like whatever you have uh, to make it useful for you. That's when they come with their. different services they'll have their testing services come in they'll have their implementation service programming services all those services will come and help you and have a solution or it could be even simple support services right so you have a good big application that somebody has built and you want somebody to support it 24 by 7 so that's when the it services companies that's where most of the it services companies earn most of their money so like supporting 24 by 7 huge application banking applications it cannot fail any second right so serving those kind of customers any issues has to be attended immediately so those are the places where actually the indian software industry grew through their services in because Uh, we were able to uh, because of our time zone also we are able to support when say america sleeps we are working right so we are able to support the systems from india at a cheaper cost so that, that that's that's one of the reason like the whole services industry in india grew so much okay sir excuse me sir i am abhipal excuse me sir in the department 
I want to know that uh, from when we had to start open source contribution in our beginning of the the first year or when? I did not get the context. Uh, open source contribution. Why? Is it a mandate? I don't know. No, sir. Uh, nowadays we have seen that uh, the exams like GSOC and all uh, needs to be uh, open source contribution. So should we get okay. uh, a job and start open source contributions or when we are in the college, we can start? Obviously, uh, when you are in college, you get started and build on it. I think the earlier you start, the better it is for you. Thank you, sir. Excuse okay, me, sir. Okay, so Excuse so me, sir. Where I'm from. Bro, sir, let me complete first. Okay. Sir, I am Basdev Gorai from Civil Engineering Department. My question is that, sir, what type of technical knowledge is required in our field? Or rather, we should know which type of technical knowledge. So, on C, on civil, the first thing is the core uh, skills, I think, uh, is required, right? So, um, technical knowledge does not always mean a computer, right? So technical knowledge is a civil technology that you are learning. It could be construction, environment, everything that is in your syllabus. So uh, that way, I think what, if you are going into designing, like civil, you can go, like you can go into design or you can go into like uh, actual site work, site operations, right? So if you're going into designing, I think you need to, uh, sharpen your skills on the uh, design softwares that are there. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, but so uh, AutoCAD. AutoCAD, obviously AutoCAD. Uh, I think uh, in your college also you'll have courses around that. But uh, in in ad addition to that, try to learn one sort of programming language um, uh, because it, it helps you in your career as well. Um, because there would be there could be situations where you may have to write a small piece of code uh, along with the work that you are doing and you could like you don't need to depend on others right so and obviously that also keeps the options open for you right uh, in terms of uh, uh, your jobs and everything so along with uh, whatever you are learning for, from for civil and please please concentrate on that because that's a very important aspect uh, on your employment yes, uh, don't uh, go by people saying that civil doesn't does have a future or things like that because I, because I had a bag I, I was from civil background and uh, one of the things that I was um, affected by was like our seniors telling that uh, you don't have to study because there is no jobs in civil actually when I when I was graduating I found that to be not true but um, I like I kind of had believed a lot of seniors at that time so is for anybody who is good, I think every industry has, has a lot of opportunities. Yes, sir. We also get to hear this maximum yeah. times from relatives and friends. I'm telling you that. I'm first hand. I'm telling you that. So uh, please don't get bothered by that. Uh, a lot of my friends and, and that uh, from that time are are running huge successful careers. Right? They are like they have done great things. Okay. So uh, on civil. So. There is nothing to think that civil is uh, any different from uh, uh, an IT or something like uh, so because there is so much buzz on the other, uh, what I'll say, uh, other uh, the disciplines or streams that sometimes it feels that is as if there is no opportunities. It is not that, right? Um, and that is the equally true for mechanical and uh, other uh, course streams as well. Because India, the way India is progressing, the way Indian the entire in infrastructure is being upgraded, I don't see the core streams to be uh, left behind. Obviously, the, the, they have matured, right? Because those streams have been there for the last 100, 150 years. So they have matured, but uh, they'll not go away. But as so, individuals, you need to be like you do, you cannot sit back and relax, right? So you need to learn things, you need to read, you need to understand, talk to your professors. Uh, I think that's the only way forward. Yes, sir, sir, 
since you told that you are from civil background so can you guide us that how you went from core branch to it sector uh, so I, i i i got from the campus only like right? so i of campus i was selected for uh, for an it uh, i was in excel i think uh, all right I, i got into excel at that time but uh, like I, as i was telling you i i at that time my 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 thought was that probably i did not wait for all the civil companies to come and all that right so feeling that probably it is the only avenue that i have in front of me which which is which is wrong but i, I made that mistake i'm trying to share it with you it's it's not Sir? that i have failed in my career but i i think uh, there were opportunities which i overlooked at that time so just as a yes, sir. Sir? thank you sir this is amit kumar singh from it department and as you had already told us about the stock of this in this pandemic area arenas so in the year 2024 when we are persuade our degree so the should all I know if I knew that Amit, I would be buying stocks. So, twenty twenty four is like it's still continuous. I I don't see why IT will not continue because uh, like um, all 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 the disciplines that are company hello you sir. still hello sir yeah sir i am vizal kumar and i am from ist branch yeah and just want... a second i i was answering i think uh, a question okay sir okay. yeah I'll, i'll come to you so what i'm saying like even if you are uh, say if, uh, even if it's a big civil company that is running their erp system like their uh, hr system their um payment system and everything would be an it system right so it enablement would be all there even if the, the backbone would still be it so uh, amit uh, to answer your question it is not Sir, going away. i was saying that uh, in this pandemic in our 2020 a lot of students got graduates and uh, due to the uh, physical physical and appearing they can't go to their offices so in 2024 by the passing of year a lot of graduates will wait for their interviews and their job opportunities so will there any our chances to get through that because if humongous students will pursuing to the to the uh, companies for their jobs yeah so competition will increase and i think yes, opportunities sir, opportunities are also increasing that's what i'm trying to say so um, on the it space the opportunities are not going to come down so but the the as i was mentioning to you and in my first slide that there are probably 10 lakh engineers coming out every year approximately that number uh, but only 50% get get uh, placed and that's because probably they are not ready right so they need to be ready so from your side you need to be prepared uh, i don't see a uh, problem in terms of having the opportunity the opportunities will just expand just need to be prepared for that so i had i had seen some of the people who done that they, they are btech and they are getting their jobs in some banks on the daily basis so that's <laughs> yeah, why i, I that's asked a, you. yeah that's basically your choice right whether you want to do that or is it like that they did not get anywhere and doing that that work that's uh, that's exactly what you want to avoid right you spend four years learning something and then you go and do a job which is which is not up to the mark at all so that's why we are having this discussion right how to ensure that you do the right things get employed in a good organization and move forward in life yes okay, sir somebody was asking a question i thank you sir yeah thanks sir excuse thank me sir, sir. excuse me sir i am shivam pandey from uh, csc branch if i learn uh, one or two programming languages and uh, also learn uh, extra skill like graphic designing so it uh, give me advantage to grab a good uh, package 
the package uh, most of the companies come with a uniform package at least uh, getting in package right if you are looking at a startup maybe do, well, those and there the package are different but when you are getting into a say a cognizant tcs those kind of companies their getting in package is almost the same so package wise it will not be different at least going in after that it's based upon your performance uh so but uh, obviously if you if you are good in something like if you pursue and uh, master something obviously uh, any company will will take that very positively that's my submission okay sir excuse me sir yeah. hello yeah please sir myself vishal kumar and i from i am from ec branch and i want to know that that what types of job opportunities in next 5 to 6 years for our branch electronics right electronics and communications yes sir yes sir the i think that's that's one sector which has which is almost like a sunshine sector for the, for indian indian industries right now because uh, previously electronics core electronics job in india were, were less right but uh, uh, now with this um, whole anti china thing okay, so there is a uh, what i will say like there is a general consensus or a general uh, um direction that we are moving away trying to move away from dependence on china this whole electronic sector in india is going to be see going to see a big boom okay yes, and yes. the reason we are not being able to actually see that is because we don't have skilled people the pool is not adequate because most of our ec guys or electronics guys have actually joined it industry <coughs> so um if you ask me uh, my reading is there is going to be a phenomenal push in the electronic sector because um, the more people move away from china they'll have, they'll try to look at uh, opportunities in in india and it's already started so i, I don't think so We're in a right spot i think thank you yes hello sir Yes. Sir, good afternoon. I am a student from CS Department. I have a question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I am very much interested in AI. So, if I want to proceed in AI, what are the opportunities for future? What are the opportunities for? Sir, what are the opportunities in AI for the my future planning? I mean, <laughs> what I can. AI is AI is where the world is, right? So if you are able to pers- pursue a good course on AI and are able to actually master it, I think like right now world is your playground. So phenomenal opportunities on AI everywhere. AI is being put, and AI is a very like a broad term. Okay, so AI will have. various angle to it so like as i was machine learning is one part cognitive learning another but little the multiple things within ai so i think when you when you are going and thinking and doing some study decide on which portion of ai you want to concentrate but uh, if ai is like is here to stay right so every everything that you would touch in the next two years would have some angle of an ai right from a chatbot um like you know chatbots right yes sir yeah right from a chatbots to a robotic arm everything uh, there would be ai uh, some angle of ai to, uh, to it so good good afternoon sir yes sir hello sir yeah. Yeah. So good afternoon sir sir i am uh, somnil niyogi from electronics and communication department sir i want to uh, ask you a question that i um, sir from very beginning i am inclined towards financial companies like goldman sachs and got uh, and a city bank etc 
and also i am inclined towards consultancy company like mckinsey so how how an engineer from the electronics department can make career into those companies right after graduating what do you want to do there sir sir uh, i am very pa passionate about uh, sir developing different solutions to engineering problems and i um, i came to know that mckinsey and all those firms hire engineers to make these sort of jobs uh, uh, means uh, to make their jobs done i'm just thinking like um, so see when you are coming out as a fresher like uh, for somebody say from a mckinsey so mckinsey and mckinsey one one big part is consulting right, right? and there are uh, it arms for that so are you thinking of joining the consulting wing or their it wing so i want to join the consulting uh, consulting department because they are the higher engineers to different engineering solutions so their it consulting space you want to hire uh, want to get into yeah, i think if if they are like uh, the only way to get immediately after graduation is if they are coming for campusing i think that's the only way i don't think they uh, likes of deloitte and mckinsey come to every college so i don't know what what their decision on that is so um, uh, otherwise getting into them you will have to have wait for a lateral opportunity like you get one or two years experience build something and then apply uh, because uh, other, if you directly apply as a fresher i don't think uh, and, and it's true for a lot of other companies as well they'll probably immediately interview you so you build your github uh, build all your uh, like somebody was telling like uh, the open source uh, contributions and things like that build build that build your story so that uh, when you play play in front of them in in a later point in time you you have a good story to tell now i'm trying not trying to what i'll say dissuade you but i'm trying to say that uh, uh, reality is, is uh, they may or may not come for campus interviews right so if they don't and then a fresher getting into that space may be a little difficult it would rather be a lateral as a lateral in, a, uh, in maybe one or two years of time after you put, you um, hone your skills elsewhere um, uh, you may try it out that's my thought process but i i am not completely aware of if there are other opportunities by which you can get into the good afternoon sir good afternoon sir manish kumar from csc department sir my dream company is microsoft how um, which long so how to prepare for microsoft and which language more important for good coding so i don't have a straight answer for that it was like uh, a very similar answer to what i was telling uh, 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 somnil before right if if they if they come you 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 have a opportunity as a fresher but otherwise you'll have to wait for the opportunity as a lateral um, there is no like a microsoft uh, training course or something like that right so you will have to either get through initially or you wait for a lateral entry but uh, obviously any of these uh, latest technologies is where uh, you will have to obviously excel in like in the clouds analytics uh, data okay, uh, iot ai any of these pieces if you are uh, specialized um, that's where they they'll be interested in you writing a dot net code uh, may not be the right uh, direction to get into microsoft good afternoon sir yes i am amit kumar singh from ig department yeah and i want to ask sir can we apply for off campus for microsoft google facebook that you, yes, to, yeah, that, that you have to check on their websites that you have to check on their websites i'm not completely sure about that uh, 
unfortunately then sir in which field we have to get stronger to get the job in these companies no no so as i was mentioning if if you have your core skills right like one is where in the department that you are working in and you you pick up one language one area of expertise one skill and uh, be specialized I, i don't see a problem in you getting an um job but in a particular company how to get into a particular company i probably will not be able to um help you out right so and how to get into google how to get into facebook i'll probably not be able to comment on that okay thank you sir yeah good afternoon good afternoon hello yeah sir i am anurag from uh, electrical department so yes. my question is uh, uh, do we in our college do we have gen c next round sir sorry i did not get that sir gen c next round sir i read in About... the internet sir yes i still do not know gen c like meaning the cognizant gen c you talking yes, about yes cognizant cognizant yeah so that uh, like see our uh, training and placement i'm i'm not coming in that capacity in this meeting so i don't know how what our training placement has in mind so you have to talk to your training and placement okay, okay. i don't know frankly grafun sir this is me from cac department yeah sir i want to ask that uh, for an interview what is more important like grabbing a certificate or having a skills question actually uh, i think your skills get endorsed by gra- grabbing a certificate uh, only getting a certificate you'll get exposed in in any in interview so if i go and get a cloud uh, certification uh, with one of my friends helping me Now the moment i land up in an interview i'll be exposed but if you come and tell me that i i have done aws um, and i have aws certification and i am i talk to you and um, understand that you know the stuff more or less and then there is your friend as well who is also there who has who is also able to understand it answer a few of the question i'll pick you because you have a endorsement from aws which i as a company will be able to sell to my customers your sellability improves with a with a endorsement from the for us by a certificate but when you when i mean a certificate um you have to decide which kind of certificates right so it's like a participation certificate in a training may not help uh, ordinary udemy certificates may or may not help right so you the more uh, the certificate comes from a product company uh, the more useful it is so uh, as i was mentioning an azure certification from microsoft or a aws certification or a different uh, like a weightage good afternoon sir yeah sir i am uh, suchanda banerjee from cac department yes sir may i ask you a question about uh, uh, as i am pursuing computer science uh, and my um, <coughs> favorite area of it is uh, um, other than our core subjects is the cyber security so what is the uh, <coughs> scope in uh, tcs cognizant ibm these uh, service companies along with cyber security uh, uh, specialization the cyber security is coming in a big way in uh, some some places like bfsi and all like banking and financials so there there is definitely a lot of scope there so but i i can't comment on it immediately that is that what will happen in 2024 what what exactly pcs cognizant will have but in general i can say that cyber security is going to be a very very um, like uh, important areas because the more we use um, cyber tools the more there would be um, malicious users or malicious uh, people so we need to we need cyber security uh, in large sense
Devika, I'll probably, I think if there are not too many questions, I can wrap up. So if I have questions. a question if you don't mind. Yep. So are you from Vincent's? Yeah, yeah. That's oh. what I said at the start. That the photo behind me is from St. Vincent's. I'm yes. actually from... Actually, I am also from Vincent's. Very good. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, I want to ask one thing. That uh, if uh, our placement will not go good, then what should be the plan B? I mean, a startup or a higher studies or government job like that or anything else? Okay, so if, if your placement doesn't go well, uh, see, higher, I, I, as I was mentioning, higher, um, higher studies is not an option, but it should be a, like a plan. Right, so don't uh, like make it an option. Or if only I don't get a, a job, I'll go for higher studies. Okay, so if you think you need to go for higher studies, I think you need to plan for it earlier. But uh, if, if you decide, okay, you have compulsions, you need to get into a job. Uh, there are things that needs uh, financial assistance at home or things like that. Right, you want to be independent quickly. And I think if you don't get into a, one of these big campus uh, in, like uh, companies, you you opt for a startup. Startups are doing fabulous work, and one of the big advantages of working in a small company is you you learn everything, right? Right from actually installing your uh, writing the code and even doing marketing, right? So it's a very good experience, uh, but sometimes. Um, there is a bit of exploitation in some of those spaces because you do a lot of work, you're not paid accordingly, but uh, that's that's probably what I'll call an occupational hazard. But uh, otherwise, uh, a lot of uh, startups are doing great work. So there is nothing to be disheartened if you don't land a job uh, from your uh, like campus. Uh, there are so many instances where people have done great in their careers, even though they have not landed a campus job. Campus job is just probably gives you a little bit of an advantage of, of an early starter. But if you have the quality in you, no, nobody can stop you. HR, if uh, in placement, if you have someone, because I need to get off as well. Sir, may I ask a question? Yeah, I, probably this is the last one that I'll take. Yeah. So, That's in case we are, uh, we are, if we are going for higher studies, which field do you professional suggest uh, in the technical field or in the management field? Like, because it's uh, means it's quite the trend to go for MBA after BTEC? Yeah, it's it's like, you see, this is a question like whether you want Chinese or Mughlai, right? So like it's up to you, right? What What is your calling? Do you want, uh, as an individual, you want to excel and uh, work on the specific area? Or if you see that you your expertise lies in uh, doing management uh, uh, related uh, stuff you go for it because there is no right answer to this song like i am i like i'll be very frank with you um, up to the people so i have a question sir yeah so what is the basic needs uh, the student uh, for engineering a student what, what is the basic uh, things are needed Basic things needed is is doing your course curriculum the right way, um, learning things, uh, learning uh, reading, understanding where uh, where the industry is going. That is what what it is like. Uh, there is no no what else a silver bullet like. There is nothing that you can do very differently. The one piece I talked about soft skills. Please please concentrate on your soft skills. Like you should be able to communicate well in the interviews and all that. That that is one very big aspect to get at least your interview done. 
uh, that is like uh, apart from your course studies or skills uh, doing something uh, um, which is the uh, learning another language or things like that so that uh, when once you uh, getting through that interview becomes easier because people will uh, appreciate the fact thank you sir thank you thank you everyone i am uh, sir thank you sir yeah really would like great. to thank you sir for your time thank you sir